Hello and welcome everybody. Today we'll be going over Laravel in depth to prepare ourselves for the certification exam. And in this video, we will be discussing service containers and service providers. Let's start off with a few definitions before we dive into the code. So what is a service container? Think of a service container as a box where you bind your class dependencies so that you can use them later on in your application. Whenever the application starts, it will bind these dependencies to the container. Then you'll be able to inject them into your classes later on and use them, rather than having to recreate the dependency each time you use it. The service container has several names and you'll probably hear them being used interchangeably. However, there are nuanced differences. Each of these names gives you some detail about the container itself. Let's go over them. The application container is an independent, self-contained unit that houses all of the code and dependencies needed to run and control the flow of the program. Here, IOC stands for Inversion of Control. Inversion of Control is a design pattern that addresses an object's dependency resolution, configuration, and lifecycle. IOC removes these three concerns from the component or class itself, and instead they become the concern of the framework. The IOC container controls the flow of these concerns and passes them on to the components. Here, DI stands for dependency injection. Dependency injection is a design pattern created by self-sufficient classes or modules that are then used or injected throughout the application. This helps us avoid hard-coded dependencies and allows our code to be more testable and maintainable. An example of this is if you had a class that would connect to a database. Here, you would have everything you needed to connect to the database contained within the class. Then you could use this class throughout your application to connect to the database, instead of having to rewrite the code to connect to the database each time you wanted to do so. In this way, any changes are made only once and in one place, making your code more modular, testable, flexible, and maintainable. The DI container automatically handles all of these dependencies that you will be using later on in your application. It controls the dependency lifecycle, which is composed of registering the dependencies, resolving them by creating an object and injecting it into the required dependency, and then returning the object, and finally disposing of the dependency when it is no longer needed. Now that we've discussed the service container, let's turn our attention to service providers. So what is a service provider? Service providers are essentially a more scalable version of the require method in PHP. They basically allow us to register additional code into our application, and this code is packaged as a service. Once these service providers have been registered within the container, we are then able to use them. This process of connecting the services to the application is called bootstrapping. When Laravel boots, it will load these service providers first through the register method and then through the boot method. Then the rest of the application will load and we will be able to use these services. All right, that's enough theory for the moment. Let's open a fresh install of a Laravel application to see how this works in practice. So go ahead and open your terminal uh, and create a new Laravel project. Change the directory into that project and open it in your favorite code editor. The first thing I want to show you is the service container, which is available through the app method. And let's die and dump uh, the application. Let's go ahead and spin up a server to check this out in the browser. All right, there's a lot of information here within the service container, but let's focus our attention now on the service providers array. This array contains the providers that have been booted to the service container and are available to us in the application. Note that we have 24 of them here. One last thing to note here is that we have another array called deferred services. These services will not be loaded with the boot method and therefore 
are not loaded on every request. Instead, they're only loaded when they're actually needed. Now let's go see how these providers were loaded. From the previous video, you'll recall that you can load service providers through the providers array within the config app.php file. Taking a look at this though, you'll notice that there are 26 providers here in this list. However, in the service container, there were only 24. So how did this happen? Well, there are a few reasons for this. First, as we discussed earlier, deferred services will not be loaded on boot. Therefore, they won't show up in the service providers list, but instead in the deferred services list. You can do this by implementing the deferrable provider interface within the service provider itself. There are also a few service providers that have been bootstrapped to the container that are actually not in the list of providers here. This brings us to our second reason, auto discovery. This feature was introduced in Laravel version 5.5 and it enables developers to install a package and have it automatically loaded into the application without having to explicitly reference it within the provider's array. So how does this work? Let's take a look at an example to find out. One of the default packages that takes advantage of the auto discovery feature is the collision service provider by Nuno Madur. Let's check out his code within vendor, Nuno Madur, collision, composer.json. Here, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see a small snippet of code. This extra, Laravel, providers, uh, etc. This is all the code that package developers need to have their packages auto-discovered. Now that we know where the service providers are located and two ways to load them into the service container, let's make our own service provider and test it out. To create a service provider, we use the following artisan command, php artisan make provider. If we're just getting started out with this command, it's always a good idea to check out the help flag to see if there's anything else we can do. In this case, we can see that we can only give it a name, nothing more, okay? Since this is a test, let's call it a test service provider. Laravel then creates this file within the app providers folder. Here we can see that it comes with two methods, register and boot. Remember that the register method will be bootstrapped to the application first. In this case, be sure to avoid executing any event listeners or routes or any other Laravel specific functionalities in this method because they may not be available when this method is called. If you need these functionalities, then you should use the boot method, which gets called after all the other providers have been registered and are therefore available for use. Let's make a simple example. Here, we are just passing the variable test uh, to all of the views within the application. After we have created the service provider, we'll now need to register it within the providers array within app.php. Now let's bring back the welcome view uh, into the router and within welcome.blade, let's go ahead and print out uh, the test variable. Now let's open up the browser. Now you can see that it's spitting out uh, the variable test right here in the browser. Uh, and we can just to prove that, uh, we can change that uh, to something else, right? Refresh, boom, changed. Now you can see that this simple service provider uh, is making the test variable available to all views within the application. That was an easy way of making a very simple service provider. Of course, in your application, you can increase the logic to make a much more complex provider. To be honest, if the logic that you want to inject is this simple, you may want to consider putting it inside of the app service provider instead, found within app providers, app service provider, and you can do the same thing here. On the other hand, if your logic then becomes too much for this one method, then it's at that point where you should consider creating a whole package. To create a package, let's start out by creating uh, a packages folder within the app folder. Uh, then we'll add the vendor name. Uh, in this case, it'll just be my name. And then we'll add our, our package name. Uh, and so since it'll be the simplest of simple packages, uh, I'll just call it hello world. Uh, and then finally within here, uh, we'll add a source folder as well. Yeah, we'll need at least the source folder, uh, but we can also have a disk folder if we're planning on compiling our assets for production. But in this case, it's really just a simple package. Uh, so we'll just stick to the source folder.
Okay, now let's go into that folder. So CD app packages that errands hello world. What we want to do here is to create the composer.json file, uh, and we can do that with composer init. And then we'll uh, be given the questions here. We'll go through all these configurations. My description: This is a uh, simple package example. Sure, I'm the author. Instability dev package type. Uh, let's just go with project. Uh, license MIT. Okay, confirm generation. Yes. All right, let's go through that. So here we go. Here is a composer file right here. And remember, this is just for the package and not for the application itself. Uh, and also remember that you can change this later. Now we can go into the source folder and let's create the file uh, hello world.php. So here within the hello world.php file, uh, we'll start off with the PHP opening tags. Uh, then we'll set the namespace, uh, set it to the vendor name, followed by the package name. And then we have our class. And I'll just call that the same thing as a package. Uh, all right. And then we need the method inside of the class. Uh, it'll be a public function here. I'll just call it hi. We're doing hello world. Uh, maybe I'll put uh, first name in here as well. And what we'll simply do is return a string. Uh, let's just say hello there, uh, first name, right? And so this will simply uh, return this string. So this is our very simple, very basic package. Now we'll have to add it to the auto loader. So notice that we created composer.json here for the package, but we'll need to go to composer.json for the application itself. Let's go all the way down, or almost all the way down, uh, until we see, there we go, until we see auto load PSR4. So the first part is what we'll see whenever we use it. So I'll just use the, the vendor name followed by the package name. Uh, and then to the right of the uh, colon is where we can find it. So where the directory is. So it's within app packages. Friends. Hello world. Source. Now let's go back to terminal uh, to the application directory. Uh, and what we'll have to do here is dump the auto load file. Uh, remember that it's cached. So now that we've made some sort of changes on it, uh, we'll have to uh, dump the auto load file. All right, so this should be auto loaded. Uh, we can test this in the browser to see if it works. So let's go to web.php. So here we need to import it. Uh, so the use Brad, there we go. You can see it uh, right there. So we have the hello world interface right there. So this will be hello, new hello world, right? And then return, uh, hello, hi, is it hi? Yeah, so the method was called hi, uh, hello, hi, I'll say Brad. All right, so now let's bring up the server, which be artisan serve. And there we go. It says, hello there, Brad. You can change this to whatever name you want. Let's say Wes, change it back, refresh, boom. So now we can see that we've created a very simple package. Of course, you'll hopefully be making something much more complex than this, uh, but this is a basic bottom line of how you can create a package and bind it to the service container. So that does it for the service container and service providers for today. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write in the comments section below. And of course, if you're planning on taking the certification exam, be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, thanks everybody.